Time and time again, you can hear the echoing of lackluster from a large number of the population around the topic of an individual's health and fitness based on some people's misconceptions and blame on their own genetics. And due to the complexity and the tremendous amount of variations of each person's individual DNA, it seems to be the best excuse there may be for not feeling up for partaking in exercise or setting nutritional plans in place because they just simply aren't going to change your genetics. Throughout working with a large variety of clients and spending a great amount of time in many gyms myself over the years, it seems there's a theme that is being repeated around the misunderstanding of our genetics roles and our ability to achieve the aesthetic, athletic, or health goals we are after. In many cases, the real root of the problem really seems to rise when people are expressing what they feel is the perfect body type, and then they follow up with immediate rebuttal that they could never look like that because of their genetics. It turns out that in some ways, this may be somewhat accurate. It is completely true that each of us have different structuring of DNA, which for some of us may mean that we are able to grow muscle much faster than someone else or lose weight much more quickly, or may be prone to a more natural hourglass figure, or have one or all of these areas be our most adverse hurdles, and so on. But how much strength does the theory that some of those among us just simply won in the genetic lottery that was predetermined even before our own birth? And how much of our aesthetic, athletic, and health outcomes are shaped by our own nurturing of self? This question has been being asked by some of science's greatest genealogists who have found that the explanation of our genetic roles in our physical outcomes to be a very complex topic to tackle. But one thing seems to be decided on across the board is that both our genetics and our nurturing of them are both playing their own major roles in the equation. As it turns out, there are specific genes that facilitate in what amount of muscular power we have, along with our overall adaptability to physical training and for the size, shape, and overall health of our body. But with there being 20 to 25,000 estimated genes among us and only hundreds of those genes really getting attention in scientific analysis, we have yet to fully understand how each gene is given to each individual and in what capacity. But the biggest findings of all may be in the newest areas of science that have been proving that we can turn off or on or even pause multiple or even maybe all of our genes in our bodies. This concept that was coined gene regulation has been a topic getting much more attention as technology and science pick up pace and have given us an opening into one of the greatest discoveries for our overall health and longevity. With the discovery of epigenetics in 1942 and our technological advances bring out a renewed surge in our abilities to understand how we are able to change our DNA in the 1990s, it has been discovered that while we may each inherently be born with specific likable or unwanted genes unintentionally prior to birth, these genes in fact have to be told to be either turned on or off within our own DNA to be expressed. To simplify, epigenetics sit on top of the chromatin or the gene markers in our DNA and instruct the genes how to respond to these markers. Some epigenetic markers can help condense chromatin, obscuring and making these genes unreadable and turning them off. Adversely, other epigenetic markers can help decondense the chromatin, making the gene accessible to the cell, turning on and making it readable. Most prominently, these epigenetics happen prior to birth. However, the elements can be affected not only by our ancestors, but also our mother's choices while the embryo is forming in her womb through her lifestyle choices, and more importantly, have been shown to be affected and changed by the health, nutrition, and day-to-day -day choices that each of us are making in our own everyday lives. With right around 50 trillion cells in our bodies, whether you have the same hereditary cells as an ancestor, twin, or another unrelated person, these genes may be affected differently than the other person who also shares the same genes. Luckily for us, biochemical scientists have been able to measure how thousands of different genes are expressed through gene profiling. 
And what they have found is that we can regulate whether or not a gene is turned on or off, most prominently by what we consume, how much we eat, how much exercise we are getting, our stress levels, and our sleep patterns. These findings are showing a direct link between our moods, health, and physical appearance, as well as physical abilities far beyond what many of us believe are genetic inevitabilities we are given before birth. As it turns out, what we are consuming and how we are treating our bodies on a daily basis seems to physically change our cells in our body and can cause us to physically and mentally either age more rapidly beyond our chronological years or even more profoundly can cause the aging process to slow down, halt, or even reverse. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you do the following things that you will turn into a real case of Benjamin Button, but as it turns out, the following things seem to be able to change your physical DNA from unwanted, disease-ridden, unhappy, or unappealing genes to ones that are causing your body to reverse its genes to turn off the cells that are hurting us and turn on the genes that make us more youthful, agile, physically and mentally youthful, and healthy. Eating plant-based diets, meditation, getting the proper amount of vitamin D, getting the proper amount of micronutrients, including the vital vitamins and compounds we are able to get through consuming soil-grown plants, beans, legumes, and also from meat. Lowering our stress levels and partaking in hypothermic conditioning, which is a sauna-induced endurance enhancement. And while these tips for keeping our genes youthful and functioning in their most healthful manner is still in the early stages of really being solidified as fact that is accepted as standard information, these forms of body and mind rituals have been being practiced for many decades by various cultures around the world. And it seems they truly may have been ahead of their time in understanding our bodies in a way that science is finally beginning to be able to prove. With an overwhelmingly large arena of possible genetic outcomes, the list of specific foods, vitamins, minerals, or compounds is overflowing with information connecting the most effective nutritional substances to fix the underlying issues we are trying to solve. In this case, it would seem that scientists from many different areas of backgrounds are working at full speed ahead to get this information backed with as much scientific proof as possible. But for now, it seems that the research around the idea that our genetics are predetermined inevitably for each of us is in some ways very true, but also very changeable. While we all may be predisposed to certain genetic disorders, body types, or athletic and mental abilities, it seems that focusing on what we do have control over now with the awareness and understanding of the major implications of our own self-health has an impact far greater than what many of us have been giving our bodies and minds credit for. We may very well not be able to set back the clots on our genetics to change what genes were unknowingly turned on or off prior to our births, but it would seem there's a strong amount of studies showing that the way we eat, exercise, and treat our bodies and minds today and each day that comes plays a major role in our future offspring's genetic outcomes, along with even being able to physically change the response of our own genetics as well. I, for one, can't wait for science to come full circle with their findings on this one. But it seems that beyond anything else, treating our body as a temple seems to be a vice that is giving us an increasingly growing list of positive advantages, far beyond what most of us considered possible prior to this video. So perhaps it's about time to risk all those bad habits of skipping the gym or giving in to our cravings for those unhealthy foods because it seems there's truly no better time in history than today to treat your body as an incredible and interactively aware and reactive being that it is. Let me know what specific topics of health or fitness related genes you may be curious about below. I look forward to getting to answer them on future videos to come.